Hi guys, this is Carmelo Soleil of the Sunny Rock Kitchen. I'm here to give you another health update. It's been quite a while. Um, I'm sorry again for the long delay. It was partly um, because we were finishing our trip, so we're back in Canada now. So, and you know, often whenever we finally land after a big trip like this, um, it's like all of a sudden all the adrenaline uh, just stops, you know, pumping, and uh, and finally, you know, all the stress and the tiredness and everything uh, finally hits. So, so yeah, so I've been, you know, just feeling like doing nothing much and uh, resting. And also, um, I didn't, I guess, I wasn't compelled to really share what was going on because, you know, basically, I feel like um, things weren't moving. You know, things. Uh, I was kind of stuck uh, at a plateau and. Uh, uh, things weren't really improving, so, you know, after a while you get tired of always having bad news, so, yeah, so anyways, I was holding off, um, just, you know, in a nutshell, like, overall, the trip went uh, much, much smoother than uh, I, I anticipated, um, it was stressful, and it did have, you know, some impact, of course, you know, because as soon as there's stress, it goes into your gut, so there was a tightness there. But then eventually I relaxed, and and the, the trip went amazingly well. The border crossing was a breeze, um, you know, which was such a relief. And I just, we stayed at some friend's home near town, you know, so that I could go see a doctor uh, and just get a, a medical, um, just you know, view of what's going on, which is something I couldn't really do in the States because, you know, I guess in Canada we're pampered. We don't have to pay for for um, visits and stuff. So so I guess I was waiting to come back so that I could, uh, you know, get a better sense of what's happening without having to put forth a whole bunch of money. So I went to see the doctor and uh, we had a whole bunch of tests done short of um, the colonoscopy, you know, and it's basically all blood tests. Um, it didn't show any inflammation, which is interesting. Uh, on a positive note, there was uh, no real imbalance other than, you know, a little bit low in iron, but no imbalance in minerals and vitamins, which I thought was pretty darn good news considering that, you know, I hadn't eaten or, you know, I didn't eat for a good part of the, you know, since January, uh, just having those uh, elemental shakes. And then when I did start to eat, uh, it was just very, very minimal. Uh, I mean, the, ver the same thing that uh, nutritionally uh, isn't like, you know, super great and, and uh, no raw food, basically. So just uh, white rice and sweet potato. Uh, and, and then I've gradually, you know, started to incorporate a bit more. But I thought, well, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I'm not uh, deficient in, you know, any vitamins or minerals, you know, in, in a big way. So that was good. But there was nothing. It wasn't really helping to tell me what's going on in my guts, though. So the doctor suggested that I uh, do a colonoscopy because that's the only way to really see what's happening. And, uh, and I asked her about the preparations, you know, in order to do one. And she said, well... Uh, you need to fast or, you know, do only liquids for 24 hours and then um, have an enema. And I thought, well, you know, it's not so bad. You know, if it's only that, I had the impression that it was really invasive, you know, print, taking harsh chemicals to clean myself out. And and I thought my guts couldn't take that. So anyway, so I thought, okay, well, maybe, you know. And uh, so she sent the request to the one of the specialists um, nearby. And, um, and that was like three weeks ago, and I haven't heard even, you know, to make up the appointment, which, you know, once the appointment is made, you know, you just know it's going to be a while still, but he hasn't even reviewed my file. And, and a few days ago, I was like, well, maybe I should write, you know, contact them and ask what's going on. And um, anyways, what's really interesting is that the day that I was going to uh, call them, I got an email from uh, one of the ladies. I mean, I've had so many people uh, generously uh, help me out, you know, offer their expertise to help me figure out what was what's been going on for me uh, health-wise. One of them, her name is Judy, and I forget her last name because it's a little tricky. 
but I'll, I'll have the link at the bottom of uh, this video. So Judy um, is an expert in especially the, the liver and gallbladder cleanse. And she contacted me after reading my story because she'd never heard of anything, any adverse reaction like I've had. So anyway, so Judy uh, wrote that day and she said um, that she had this, uh, you know, that she suggested that I read this article about the dangers of colonoscopies that's been put together by this uh, man that had a horrific experience. And, and I read it and ah, whoa, the alarm bells, eh? So I knew that there was the, you know, the chemicals that they make you take, that's not good news, right? So that was my main concern. The other thing that I'd heard of is that it's impossible to actually sterilize uh, the equipment. And I didn't really know the specifics, but this guy, he, uh, he mentions that because it's very sensitive electronic equipment, it can be uh, put under like hot, you know, under heat, uh, it can be put with harsh chemicals, and the, so there's only this uh, one chemical component that they put it in, and and apparently that particular chemical is really uh, not good for people that have you know inflammation and co you know colitis or Crohn's that sort of thing, which is a lot of the time the people that need to have colonoscopies done. And, uh, and the only way to clean it would be to really brush, you know, the, the, uh, the, the tube, but they don't even do that. They just kind of let it sit there. So, so higher, you know, there's risk of contamination, because imagine all the fecal matter that accumulates in the little, you know, crevices, you know, over, over a period of time. Uh, so that was another bad news. But something else I didn't know is that they put you under, you know, they give you anesthesia, which I thought, well, I don't know, you know, that even, you know, for, there's the sense, you know, that they, you don't really, uh, you can't know what they're doing to you, you know, you're totally, like, vulnerable, they can do whatever, and what he was pointing out is that sometimes the, the um, I mean, you can get someone who's really good at it, but, you, you know, you can't really monitor the quality of the, of how the, the uh, um, exam is done, because you're gone, right? So that's, you know, something else. And then, uh, but the, the biggest um, aspect doesn't happen very often, but once in a while, there's actually, because imagine you're getting this little camera on a tube um, shoved up like four feet into your colon. So what's, you know, what happens, there's a risk of, you know, there's a turn that's not quite well done, or it's not well manipulated, and then it per perforates the uh, the lining um, of the uh, of the colon. And when that happens, you know, it's like bacteria can you know, an infection can happen, you know, real real bad. And the thing is, it that that um, like I said, it doesn't happen often. But if it happens to you, you're in in. I was going to say deep shit. <laughs> You're in trouble, you know? <laughs> this guy, it happened to him. It took a few days to figure out what was going on. He, he said he had pain, and then he said, well, that's normal. And then his, all his vitals started to, you know, like plummet. And, and um, in the end, they had to actually remove his, all but four feet of his intestines. And, um, and then, you know, he was on tubes for, you know, feeding only off tubes for like six months. And then, anyways, a horror story. And I thought the last thing I would want is a complication like that, you know. Like when I did the, sever the second liver flush, I was thinking, I was doing it because I was thinking um, I wanted to remove the stones that were blocking um, in the passage somehow and, and preventing me from uh, being able to have fat, you know. I, I would... I would have an intolerance to fat, so I was so I did that as a means of fixing my first situation. So I thought, and it, look, it turned into a nightmare. So, so I thought, you know, I'm just I'm I'm pretty much done with big invasive, um, whether it's from the medical or it's you know or I do it naturally on myself. I think that was a big lesson to tell me let my body do its thing. So all this to say, colonoscopy's out. Um, and um, so a few days ago, um, just actually today marks the six month uh, anniversary of when I, not much to celebrate I must say, but uh, it's been exactly six months uh, since I did the second gallbladder, uh, liver gallbladder cleanse. And that's when things really started to go wrong for me. So 
So a few days ago, as I knew this date was coming, it's like automatically triggered in me this this wanting to assess, you know, what what's been done and what you know what's coming next. And you know, for one thing, you know, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, considering it's been such a difficult, challenging time. Uh, it's hard to believe it's been six months since you know my my quality of life has been. <laughs> And you don't realize how precious health is until you have, you know, health issues. I've never had health issues my whole life, so, so what a wake up call, eh? So seeing, um, yeah, how you know, amazing, how this amazing challenge that's been presented to me, um, it's still, um, you know, incredible that somehow I've had the energy to to deal with it as I ha as I've had. Um, but at the same time, seeing that I could feel nothing was really changing. Like, sure, now I can eat more things without intestinal bleeding, which is great, but it's still so limited. I mean, now I can have a few raw fruits. Um, and, you know, like I said, some cooked, you know, the white rice. Now I can have a, some millet uh, and sweet potato, potatoes, um, eggs. And, and then I started playing with gluten-free. Uh, baking because you know using rice flours and then I'm okay with the tapioca and potato starches so so at least it gives me you know a bit of option you know I can make pancakes and you know muffins and such so but you know I don't see a real improvement like seeing that oh now I can start having more raw or you know I can have greens or you know nothing I don't see like a natural progression which is what uh, should have been expected from like after you know doing the elemental diet as I've done and not seeing you know much much of a way out basically so anyway so I woke up one morning and I was pretty uh, desperate I was freaking out and uh, and thankfully you know I'm grateful for EFT for the emotional freedom technique um, you know I did some of that and it helped you know give a voice to those emotions that were building up and uh, allow, give them a chance to release. And I, you know, came out of that experience with the intention, you know, forming the intention, um, asking for guidance and, uh, you know, asking the mystery or the energy behind all things to give me some sign and let me know what, what is the next step, you know, which direction should I be going in because it just seemed like, you know, I wasn't no going anywhere so one of the only areas where I've noticed a positive change is um, I think something's changed in my gallbladder uh, even though I was told that there are multiple stones in my gallbladder um, and I had a, a, an intolerance to fat for months I could only tolerate one and a half teaspoon at a time of oil or anything fatty and that has changed, so that's, you know, that's definitely good news, because the last, you know, I kept thinking I have to figure out what's going on in my guts, and then after that I still have the gallbladder issue, right? But it looks like, you know, at least this is not as urgent as it used to be. So, right, oh, and I should mention something that's been interesting, that's been uh, presented to me, um, a couple of things that uh, have come to me uh, number of times and it kind of accumulated uh, so it gave me I always like to pay attention to to omens you know because to me that's the way that life can communicate with you you know it can communicate with words like you know God can can talk to you or may I guess it talks to some people but but it can talk to you in words but it can you know show you and and if you pay attention to what what happens to you right so one thing that kept being presented to me was um, chicken broth because well my friend Ula who's a colon hydrotherapist uh, she's of course you know she's done a lot of research on anything connected to to the colon and of course she's um, looked into you know IBD and IBS and, and seeing what can be done and she's researched quite a bit around the SCD diet so the, it's the specific carbohydrate diet uh, which is another approach to deal with IBD. Or so it ha can have a lot of success for some people. Uh, it's basically, well, no carbohydrates at all, uh, just some, you know, fruits, vegetables, and uh, no grains. 
uh, and meat. And of course, I mean, for me, I'm not drawn at all to that approach. For one thing, it's very, uh, to me, it reminds me of the 80-10-10 in a way, because it's very, con you know, there's potentially a lot of control, you know, needs to be implemented uh, in what you eat, and I don't like that. Uh, and also, basically, the only things I can eat, you know, if I was to take the, the starches and the, and the um, carbohydrates out, I'd be left with nothing, you know, carrot and squash, that's the only things I can tolerate. So I thought, well, that's not really viable for me, and then, of course, you know, there's no way I'm going to start eating meat. Um, so, and that's not, I'm not saying that from a place of just, you know, uh, of course, you know, eating a, another uh, living being doesn't, doesn't feel right. But I'm also speaking in terms of my body, you know, there's a reason why I became vegetarian in the first place, because th the first 30 years of my life were horrific. Uh, eating, I mean, I would commonly get up from the, you know, the dinner table after eating a big, you know, meal of, with meat in it, and I'd be bent in two, you know, I had so much pain, you know, digestive trouble, and, and I mean, meat does not agree with my body at all, so... But, you know, the, the broth, uh, so, and, you know, the, the SCD diet talk a lot about the benefits of broth. So, while I was staying at Ula's, she, um, you know, she was, she'd made some chicken broth and she asked me if I'd like to try it. And what I thought, okay, I'm going to ask my body, you know, because I'm still working with that muscle testing technique. It's, it's been such a blessing because that's the only way I've been able to determine what foods I can eat you know, that what foods would really work for my body and, and what supplements, regardless of, you know, belief systems or, you know, this approach, that approach, what other, what's worked for others, you know, it's been really tailored for me and, and it, that's been essential. So I thought I'm going to ask my body and I turned it over to, to, um, to him. So I did the, um, the testing and it tested yes. So I thought, all right, so I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to give it what it needs and forget about, you know, what, what I might think about it. And so I did some chicken broth. Uh, of course, the flavor was <laughs> awful. <laughs> Mixed it with, uh, you know, sweet potato or you know, some vegetables so it wasn't so bad, you know, in a soup. And after a few days, actually, I started, you know, the inflammation got better and I entered like a phase where, you know, it was seven or ten days where I felt really good. I just had, you know, a remnant pain here in that top, you know, the top corner just before the descending colon where I've always had the constant pain. So that's the only area, but otherwise I didn't have any pain in my, the rest of my gut. So that was, and so much more energy as a result. So that was... Um, that was good news for sure, and I thought there's no, co you know, it can't be a coincidence. It had to be uh, connected to the broth. So, anyway, so I did, uh, so I tried the, the broth, um, and that had some positive result. And then something once we came to uh, the other, you know, when we left Ulas and came to our other friend's property where we'll be spending the summer, some like it kept coming to me around how. Cannabis has been uh, has had a really high success rate with people um, with intestinal disorders. There's been an experiment in particular with Crohn's disease, I think, and 80% of the people that participated had uh, not only did the symptoms alleviate, but also the condition in some cases, you know, just, just got gone. <laughs> So, and that comes from the fact that cannabis has a very strong, like, antibacterial um, properties. So then that would, you know, it would have helped kill the infections uh, and then and then help to restore, you know, the, the natural balance in the gut. So. so, anyway, so I'd read about that. and But what happened in the course of one week, it kept coming at me from, you know, all sorts of sources, including my sister, which is the, the last possible place I would have thought of, you know, she, she talked uh, to me about THC oil, and um, so anyways, so what happened for, you know, almost like a little mini miracle, um, someone, I was talking to somebody about it, and it just so happened that he was gifted a bottle of, of uh, THC oil called Phoenix Steer.